This is an apology for the uh, crackly voice syndrome that seems to be going on at the moment in this video. I'm not entirely sure what's going on with my voice recorder or my microphone, but it seems to be causing a few issues. I do apologise, and I hope you enjoy the video. Hello again, and welcome to another kind of Neverwinter video. Um, this is Vordok once again. Uh, I'm not with Frostfeather this time. Um, I'm guessing she probably fell asleep after doing an all-nighter and a half a day -er and uh, walking a dog, so she's not with me, unfortunately. Uh, but that does mean I have a good chance of coming somewhere on the damage meters. Now, I'm going to ruin it for you. Unfortunately, I don't really. Um, I, I mess up a few times in this instance. Uh, this is actually one of the epic instances, uh, the Cloak Tower. Now, that doesn't mean that they store cloaks in here, uh, it's all to do with the law, the tower's cloaked or something. Um, but anyway, as you can see, we're just moving through some of the trash, uh, pretty quick kills and everything. To be honest, this is one of the easier epic uh, dungeons. I wanted to show this one because I wanted you to see that when you hit 60 and when you've not got a lot of gear, it's not impossible to just jump into them and start doing them. <clears throat> they are actually layered. So there are easier ones, and then there's harder ones as your gear improves. Um, which you won't be allowed to enter until you hit that gear level. Now, this one is one of the starter ones. Uh, I'm still working my gear up at the moment. I only hit 60 yesterday, and I've only done really a few of these epic dungeons. Um, I might try and bring a video of the uh, the Mad Dragon instance, because that's that's a lot of fun. And the last fight is pretty tough and pretty epic and pretty long as well um, so once again just clearing trash I'm messing up most of my rotation here because I'm not really concentrating too much um, now the thing I'm, I'm gonna go a lot into how uh, great weapon fighters actually work in dungeons because a lot of people say they're rubbish or they didn't do as much damage as everybody else so why take them and the simple reason is, and you'll get to see it at some points in the video, great weapons fighters are amazing at taking out large groups very, very quickly, and also defending the cleric, um, because clerics do tend to pull an awful lot of aggro. So, really, it's not about doing max damage with a great weapons fighter, it's about making sure the rest of the group is free to do what they do best, which is damage, and, or heal, or attack. Now, Great Weapons Fighters can also double up as an off-tank, and they do this extremely well. Uh, I've done it before, and you'll see me a couple of times in, in this instance. Just run ahead and, and pull a pack, because I know I can handle it, and I'm not too worried about the tank being there. Obviously, if it's a bigger pack or if it's a harder pack, then I'll let the tank go first. But the main reason why I like running in uh, is because that yellow bar you see to the left of me is my tab ability, which allows me to deal a lot more damage very very quickly and I gain that whenever I get hit as you saw just then. Now the thing with this is if you run in first and you get hit by a few enemies at the same time you've pretty much got a full bar and you've got the full duration of that special. It makes a huge difference to the damage output for the pack that you're, you're dealing with at the time. Now one of the things I do enjoy is the versatility of a great weapons fighter. Like I said, you can either you can tank, you can take out groups of mobs. I mean, look at the speed of that. The, <laughs> I know there's other people involved in that as well, but you know, great weapons fighters are amazing at just dealing a lot of damage to a lot of mobs um, very, very quickly. Now, they're not the only AOE class, don't get me wrong. And as you can see there, I quite comfortably finish off that guy, but not really taking much of a hit. Um, so we're, we're running through, we're, we're just getting to one of the bosses. This is a fairly quick instance as well. It's about 20 minutes long if you're going through it like this. Now it does look rather easy and it does look like we're just flying through this and that's, well, because we are, but there are, if, it depends on the group. If you're with a good group, this will happen. If you're with a bad group, these epic dungeons can give you a lot of, uh, a lot of hassle. So, it all depends on the group setup. Now, ideally you want to have a cleric in the group. A tank isn't so much of an issue. 
uh, at least for the, the lower epic dungeons, because if you've got a great weapons fighter, they can quite easily do it. And if you don't, then the cleric can normally keep somebody alive long enough to, to get through the instance. It just means it's a little harder, a little more tricky, and you've just got to be a tiny bit more careful with the pulse. But the unfortunate thing is, if you're queuing randomly, it's not like World of Warcraft. You don't get, like a slot for a tank, a slot for a healer, and then three slots for DPS. You just get whoever's put into that instance randomly. So you could go into an instance where there isn't a healer and there isn't a tank. And that's when you're going to start having a lot of trouble in the in the epic instances. In fact, a lot of people don't even bother. They'll either kick someone or they'll leave and queue again. Uh, but ideally, you, you want at least a cleric in the group. So, uh, there have been op uh, there have been occasions where we've had like three mages, myself, and I don't know a rogue or something, and you know, no real tank, no real healer. That wasn't really going to go anywhere. So, especially with the instance we were in at the time, it was one of the harder ones uh, for this level band, and th that group fell apart. So, <clears throat> it. it all depends on the group setup, really. I mean, we're quite lucky here. We've got a tank, we've got a healer, we've got the three DPS, uh, we've got two weapons fighters, and a rogue. Uh, rogues are incredibly good. Rogues are insane at the minute, and so are mages. I think weapons fighters get the raw end of the deal, but again, we're, we're not really there to deal masses of damage to one target. Now there, I was hesitating because uh, I wasn't sure what was going to happen with that mob, but then I decided, you know what, if we just run into the boss room, the mob's going to follow us, we can just take care of it with the boss, but I think the cleric actually turned around to take care of it whilst we continued to the first boss of the instance. Now, he's not very hard, I'm going to be honest, none of the bosses in this one are very hard. Um, so we, we're just bursting down some of the ads. And as you can see here, I break away from the single ad to take on the group because that's what I'm better at doing. That's, you know, that's kind of my area. So, if you're a great weapons fighter and you're fighting one mob and there's a group over on the other side of the room attacking somebody, like here, go to the group. Don't stay on the one mob. Switch. Go to the group. Do your AoE. Take them all out. And then, you know, if there's none left, go back to the single target same uh, principle with bosses because a lot of bosses basically overwhelm you with ads and it's nice to have a great weapons fighter who can just run in take care of those ads whilst everybody else concentrates on the boss uh, now in some fights it requires everybody taking care of the ads so it just depends on the fight and who you've got with you uh, there we s there's the loot it's nothing great um, Sometimes they drop epics, which are lovely, and sometimes they just drop level 60 blue items, which are also pretty good, to be honest. Uh, they're not terrible. I'd prefer the epics, though. Um, it's all random, and apart from one thing, actually, if you look underneath my map on the right-hand side, you'll see Chest Unlocked Dungeon Delve event. Now, this is an event that happens once every so often. Um, what it is, is basically for an hour, any dungeon that you join within that hour has a chest at the end, which is unlocked. And this chest contains loot that belongs to you and you only. It's not random. It is aimed at your character, so it will benefit you in some way, of course, unless you've got better. Uh, but it's a nice little perk uh, for doing dungeons whilst that event's active because it means you are going to get some loot. You're not going to, you know, go through it all and not get anything from it. There is going to be a reward at the end waiting for you. And it doesn't matter if the timer runs out. As long as you've started that dungeon whilst the event is active, that chest remains unlocked. If you leave the dungeon, if the group falls apart and the time has run out, then that's it. You've lost that chest. So I don't get it when it's a dungeon delve event. And it's blatantly obvious you're not going to get into another one before it ends, and people leave, like, after one wipe on a boss. Because th there's no point, you may as well see it through, you know? <laughs> get the chest, get that loot that's, that's for you. Um, but, 
you know, I, d I don't understand a lot of people in MMOs sometimes because they just seem to lack sense. Um, now, again, going through some mobs, nothing majorly exciting. Uh, so, I'd like to take an opportunity just to say that the more I played this game, the higher level I got, the more I've enjoyed it. These dungeons, some of them are very easy, some of them are more tricky. I can't wait to get to the higher level ones to see what the difference is between these ones and those ones, and if they get harder, or with the gear level, if they stay the same. So, I'm looking forward to that. I unfortunately have a bit more gear to get before I can go into those. And like I said, here you see me run ahead, pull a group, bars filled, I can now use my tab special. Which I don't think I do. There's several mistakes I make. This is one of them. I don't use my abilities when I probably should. Uh, but, you know, sometimes you think, oh, I'll save it for the next pack because I know what's coming up, i.e. a boss here. Um, but sometimes it doesn't really work out and you save something for a pack that either dies too quickly or you miss. And, you know, you just kind of ruin your chances, really. Um, take it as it comes. I, I should really start doing that myself. So here again we've got another boss. Lots of ads thrown in so again I break off to try and deal with the ads. Now luckily they all group around the boss so that means I can hit the boss whilst I'm hitting them with my AoE. Um, and I try and take them out as quickly as I can. It's not going fantastically well because I'm being battered left, right, and centre. Uh, again, I'm not really paying much attention to the to the red AOE on the floor because there's a cleric with us. So if I get hit, it doesn't really matter. It fills up my bar quicker, and they heal me up. Easy. Um, so in a way, it has become a bit more kind of face roll uh, since the leveling in dungeons. Uh, where you did actually have to be a little bit more careful. But I'm not saying it's always like that, because it's not. There are some, some runs where you, you actually do need to uh, keep a very close eye on what's going on, which can be difficult with all of the special effects going around like this. Um, now, one ability I'm using is a shout ability, and the shout ability basically marks targets, which are those X's above the head. Now, this ability doesn't do any damage outright, and a lot of people might be thinking, why aren't you using an ability that does no damage, you know? Why, why aren't you using something that does? And the reason why is because my spec incorporates that, and any marked target um, that I hit takes an extra 15% damage. So over time, it makes up for the uh, nice big number there. Well, I say big, it's actually quite average, but uh, it makes up for the, the lack of, well, basically it makes up for the lack of um, of the damage that it should have done on attack. So in big fights, it's extremely useful. In the smaller, quicker fights, I'm imagining you probably lose some damage uh, from it. It is possible to swap out your skills, but it is a pain in the bum when you're trying to do it. And you're in the middle of an instance kind of thing, so yeah. Um, so I, I don't tend to. I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know what that is. I don't know why I picked it up. I don't know if it's any use or not. I just saw it and I thought, screw it, I'm having it. Yoink. Mine. Thank you very much. So, we're now running down towards the last boss. Uh, there's three bosses in this instance. That one dropped an epic shield which I can't use, but I'm fairly certain that the, the tank we've got in the group was very appreciative that it dropped that. I, however, wasn't. I was hoping for some nice uh, nice warrior loot, but uh, no can do. Now, in situations like that, oh, I did actually hit him, but in some situations like that, when a mob's running past and you use that, that shout ability, it doesn't actually land. It doesn't hit them, and it, it won't put the mark on, and it is a little annoying sometimes when that happens because it's a long cooldown but you know uh, it, it does actually bring me to another point misses in this game again random number generators RNG not such a big issue in this game uh, it's not a case of if you don't have this percentage hit you're going to have this percentage chance to miss um, 
basically, if you miss in this game, it's your own silly fault. You miss, you know? You, you turn around, try to spin and attack another target, and you completely and utterly miss them. That's your fault. There is no random number generator on it. It's just where you land your swing. So, you've got to be very, very careful about you know, which way you're facing, which mob you're going for, and in hectic situations where there's lots of mobs running around, you tend to lose where your reticule is, which is just above your head, and you just totally miss. You swing and a miss. And I'm fantastically good at doing that, I've got to admit. Uh, I've got to practice on that a bit more, I think. Sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't, but really, to keep up with the damage, I need to be hitting those hits every time. I, I can't be... I can't be missing like that. Um, now what you just saw there was I went to loot something and somebody ran in front of me and unfortunately the same button for looting is the same button to bring up the menu to inspect someone or invite them or whatever. And a bit of a nightmare sometimes when you're trying to loot something and somebody keeps running in your way but meh, nothing major. Now as for bugs, moving swiftly onwards by the way, as for bugs uh, at max level, I've not actually come across any. One of my friends was saying that they weren't playing at the moment because they were waiting for them to sort out the bugs, and I get to level 60, uh, along with Frostfeather, and we we haven't noticed any game-breaking ones. There's been a couple here and there. I had one where I was in an instance, and when we ran up to a boss, when it does the kind of zoom in and here's your boss thing, camera, uh, it kept doing that over and over and over again for about four or five times. Not game-breaking, it was a tiny bit annoying, but it didn't stop me from enjoying the fight or anything. Um, and I've not really noticed anything that's kind of made me think, ooh, god, that's bad. You know, I don't like that. So, I'm not sure. I don't know... I don't really know what they're talking about. Maybe they just haven't played in a very long time and things have actually been fixed, but they've not checked it out. I mean, I'm fairly new to this game. Um, Yes, I know I'm level 60 already, but it's actually fairly quick to level. Uh, it, I think, to be honest, they got the balance right for leveling. Instead of Warcraft trying to hit 89 to 90 being a grind and a half that takes all day, uh, this was very much just a couple of hours doing some quests, and you were there um, between 59 and 60. And it's pretty much like that throughout the whole the whole thing. And I like that. I like the fact that you don't have to spend forever trying to level because it allows you to test out some of the other classes a bit more, it allows you to get to the end game, um, and it doesn't feel like you're spending a long, long period of time getting nowhere, uh, which, you know, I did kind of feel when I was playing Mr. Pandaria. I got to 89 and the grind to 90 just, it almost killed me. I had a headache by the end of it. So, um, I, I like the fact that that's what they've done with that. It's very good that they have done that with that. You know, I think, personally, they got the, the experience right in this. And there's numerous ways to level as well. I'm just going through random things whilst we're running through here. Um, and, you know, you can level through PvP, which is actually quite a good way to level. You get quite a chunk, even for a loss in a PvP game, quite a chunk of experience. You can level through Foundry uh, quests or dungeons. The Foundry is basically player-built content, and that's what makes this game kind of interesting. The fact that you, you can, if you're that way inclined, use the Foundry to build a whole quest line or a whole dungeon and you can put your your story into it, you can put your atmosphere into it and it works. It's brilliant and it? some of them are really fun, some of them need some work but some of them are really good, the people who do them really know what they're doing. Um, moving swiftly onwards, this is the last boss Vancy Bloodscar, an orc of some sort. Um, to be honest, again, uh, I was expecting a bit more from this boss on, on Epic mode. I, I really thought she was going to be a bit of a nightmare, but uh, because she is in normal, in the normal mode when you're leveling up, this boss is an absolute pain in the backside. But 
damage. She actually isn't in this. Yeah, sure, she hurts, and there's a couple of moments, like if you get caught by that attack, it's it's painful. Uh, but, you know, a quick dash to the side and you're pretty much out of it. And again, you get your typical, I'm going to throw mobs at you kind of thing that you get with the boss. So, you know, that's fine. It's not quite as bad as the Mad Dragon, though. That is... <laughs> that is something else. That is uh, a, a fight that is really quite a painful fight. Otherwise, you, you've got to know what you're doing. You've got to know which adds to take out when, and you've got to know when to go on the dragon and DPS them down a bit, and when to stop, because you need to take care of those adds. You can't leave them. So, back to this fight. As you can see, nothing special, nothing major. It's, like I said before, a very easy dungeon to begin with um, at level 60 and it's nice that they've done that that you've got those ones that you can get yourself a bit of gear before moving up to the next lot so here you see boss is dead you get a, a big table full of who's done what when they did it blah 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 now what you'll see here is most damage done I come third I'm slightly behind the other great weapon fighter that was my own fault, I didn't take chances when I should have done, um, that's what happens, basically. Um, however there, most enemies slain, you'll see I'm right up at the top, because I'm concentrating on those packs, I'm using my AoE abilities, I'm getting rid of them so that the rest of the group can continue with what they're doing. Now that chest is the chest that you get at the end of the instance, and that's what gives you the, the loot. I didn't get any epics this time, they, they can give you epics. Um, I believe it gives you any piece of loot from the instance and it's random as to which one that is aimed at you. Now I get a helmet here, now I've been looking for a new helmet because the one I'm wearing at the minute is like level 30 something and it's good but you know it's outdated now so this was actually quite a nice helmet uh, so I enchanted it, switched it out and that was it, that was the instance. Uh, so it's a very quick instance that one, don't be fooled by how easy that looked. Yes that one was easy but I guarantee you some of the other ones are very very difficult. I was just wanting to show you what it's like as a new level 60 to jump into an instance and think I can do this. So there we go. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Ta-ta!